Okay, let's continue our work with integration. This time I want to integrate x times e to the x squared dx. Now when I look at this, I, it, to me it looks like e to the u. And I know that uh, integrating e to the u will be very simple. So let's try that to start with for a substitution. Let's start by saying let's let u be equal to x squared. Then du will be equal to 2x dx. And remember, all I'm doing is differentiating here and using my differentials. du dx, when I differentiate this, I get 2x, and then I multiply both sides by dx to make it look like this. Okay, so u is equal to x squared. Well, this looks like e to the u then. du is equal to 2x dx. Well, I have my x dx. What I need is 2x dx. So if I put a 2 here as a coefficient, so I have 2x dx, I can make up for that by putting a 1 half in front of the integral because I know that my constant factors like 1 half and 2 can cross the integral symbol. So by putting a 2 inside here and a 1 half out in front where they're both factors, really what I've done is multiplied by 1. So I haven't changed the value of this, but I have set it up so that I can take this substitution right here put it in and rewrite this as one half the integral of e to the u and then I have 2x dx which is exactly du. So it's all set up then as a nice simple integral and I know how to integrate e to the u. That's simple. So this becomes one half the integral of e to the u is e to the u plus c and then since I, my original problem is in terms of x, I'm going to rewrite my answer in terms of x here by letting u be equal to x squared. So I end up with 1 half e to the x squared plus c. Now, <clears throat> that's the answer to this problem. That's the antiderivative of this expression right here. Let's check it with a little um, differentiation. So if I say let's let y be equal to 1 half e to the x squared plus c, then the derivative of y is going to be 1 half times e to the x squared times, remember now I have to differentiate the argument of that function by the chain rule. So the derivative of e to the x squared is e to the x squared times the derivative of the argument, which is going to be 2x. And then I differentiate c and get 0. So what do I end up with here? These 2's divide out. I end up with just x e to the x squared. So sure enough, the <clears throat> antiderivative of this is this, because if I take this function and differentiate it, I end up with the thing I was looking at in the first place. So in this direction right here, I'm differentiating with respect to x. When I go in the other direction, I'm integrating with respect to x. So this expression right here is the derivative of this, and this expression is the antiderivative of this. My integration by substitution here is working very, very well. Anytime I'm off by a constant, that's no problem. I'll just put the constant in, multiply by its reciprocal on the outside, and I'm all set. Let's try another one of these. This time I have dx over 5 minus 3x, and I want to find the antiderivative of that. Okay, to me this looks like maybe du over u, something like that. I have something over u. 1 over u I know I can find the antiderivative of because I'll just use my natural log function. So let's try that as a start. Let's say, let's let u be equal to 5 minus 3x. Then if I do that, du must be equal to, well, I differentiate this with respect to x. I'm just going to end up with negative 3, so negative 3 times dx. All right, so du is negative 3 dx. Well, notice up here I have the dx. Let's just put the negative 3 in front. Now I have negative 3 dx. That's going to be exactly du. Now I want to make sure I don't change the value of this integral. So at the same time that I put this negative 3 as a factor in the numerator, I'm also going to multiply by a constant factor of negative one-third on the outside of the integral. Remember, constant factors can cross back and forth over that integral symbol, so really what I've done right here is multiplied the whole thing by one. I know that's not going to change the value of anything, but for me it sets it up in the form of 
du over u, so I can do that uh, integration that I want to do. So, okay, I'll take this substitution right here, rewrite the integral in terms of my substitution, so I have negative one-third times the integral of negative 3 dx, which is, remember, du, all divided by 5 minus 3x, which is just u. Okay, that's exactly what I want. I know how to integrate that. It's very simple. This just becomes negative one-third times natural log absolute value of u plus c. The absolute value there is necessary because logarithms, you can't find the logarithm of a negative number. And just in case we're not sure what's going on here with the u, suppose that it could come out negative for some reason, we want to make sure in our answer here we're not taking the logarithm of a negative number. So just put the absolute value symbols in, no problem with that. All right, so negative one-third natural log u plus c. Now I'll back substitute. Here's my u, 5 minus 3x. Negative one-third natural log absolute value, 5 minus 3x plus c. So there's my integral right here. It comes out to be this. This is the antiderivative of this thing that I started with right here. I could check this by differentiating this. You'd see I get exactly what I started with right there. So a little look at the substitution or integration by substitution, some simple substitutions. I never worry about it if my substitution is off by some constant factor because that's easy to take care of. All I have to do is put that constant factor wherever I want and then multiply outside the integral by the reciprocal of that and I know I haven't changed the value of the integral.